Hi, you're welcome to this tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create my SQL database using relational database service in AWS. I'll also show you how to connect to it using my SQL workbench and as well how you can create a table and insert some data into it. All right. So if you're ready, I am ready. So let's get started. But please, before I begin this tutorial, kindly subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do so and as well click on the notification bell so that way you stay up to date and get notification each time I upload a new video. So having signed into my AWS Management Console, this is my relational database service. I will just click on it. But if, you're, if, you're, if you can't find it here, all you need to do is to type it over here, RDS. And this is it over here. I'll click on it. Great. So this is RDS dashboard. All I need to do is to click on create database. We actually have to database creation method so we can either use standard create or easy create so i will go with this standard create i will scroll down the engine option we are using is my sql so i'll just select my sql and i will scroll down the version we're gonna be using is point of creating this video this is actually the latest version we have but you still have option to choose the version you want. So on that template, we actually have three different templates you can use. So we are not doing any production workload now. So I will go with free tier. But if this is production workload you're trying to um, spin up a database for, you can go with production. And this one, if you intend to use this for development outside of your production environment, you can go with this. So I'll just click on free tier, but before I select this, so let me walk, walk you through on what availability and durability options we have here. So under deployment option, we have multi AZDB cluster. So if you're going with this one, um, once you create your instance, your database instance, you're going to have a primary database instance and two readable standby database instances. Each of them will be in different availability zones and that will help you with high availability, data redundancy and also help you to increase the capacity to serve read workloads. If you want to go with this one, this one will create a database instance for you and just a standby database instance for you. Each of them will be in different availability zone. There is also high availability. There is data redundancy, but then the standby instance will not actually support connection for read workloads. So this one is just a single database instance if you don't want any standby. All right. So over here, I will just select free tier so it won't get charged after this class, all right? Scrolling down under settings, database identifier, I'll just need to type the name I want for this database. So I'll just give it database one, that is fine. So scrolling down under master username, I'm good with admin, so I'll leave it this way. And then under password, Permit. I will scroll down and under bustable classes, this is actually the only option we have because we are using free tier. So what I will do is to click on this to toggle it on. And once I do that, I can select it to micro. And that is selected. So I'll scroll down under storage type. I'll go with general purpose SSD and allocation. Sorry, allocated storage is 20. That is fine. I'll leave it. This storage auto scaling is, is enabled and we actually need it. That is fine. So this will allow the storage to increase after the specified threshold is exceeded. So I'll leave it and scroll down. 
under VPC, I'm going to leave this default VPC here. But if you have a custom VPC you've created, you can go ahead and select it under here. So I'll leave this this way. I'll scroll down. Under public access, I'll be selecting yes because we want to be able to connect to it using my SQL Workbench. So I'll scroll down. We'll be using a default security group, so that is fine. I'll just leave this the way it is. I don't really have any requirements to, you know, select availability zone, so I don't have any preference. I'll leave it that way. Now scroll down. The database authentication method we'll use is password authentication, so that is fine. But before we go ahead, I'll click on this additional configuration to show you the default port. So that is 3306 and I won't change this. So I'll scroll down and click on this additional configuration. So under here, I'll be giving my initial database name and I'll call it account. Then I will scroll down all the way. I won't actually touch all this. I'll leave every other thing as default. So if you read here, you notice that this is under free test, so you won't be charged for creating this instance. So I'll just go ahead and click on create database. And this is creating. So before you close this, you can view your credentials, all right? So you can view your credentials and once you close it, you might not be able to see your password again. So I will recommend you write down your password in a secure place so you don't forget it. But every other information about your database can actually be gotten when you open your database. So. Because this takes time, I'm going to pause this video and I'll come back once the creation is completed. Thank you. After a few minutes, I refreshed and I can see that my database has been created. Under status is showing available. Okay. So all I need to do is to click on this database to open it. So under endpoint, I'm just going to copy this endpoint here because we need this information to connect using my SQL workbench. And as well, ensure you, you still remember your password and your username because we need the information as well. So having copied this, all I need to do now is to go and connect to this database instance using my SQL workbench. SQL, okay, it is here. I'll just click on it to open. Let me maximize it. Great. So all I need to do here is to click on this plus icon here. Great. So over here, let me maximize it. Connection name is actually any name you want to use. So I will just give it the name as my DB. And this connection method is fine this way. I will leave it. Then under host name, I'll go ahead and paste the endpoint I copied. So this is it here. And the username is the username you use when you um, created your own RDS instance. So mine is admin and password is the password I use. So I'll click on store in vault. And this is the space to type my password. Ensure you type your password correctly so you don't have error. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. So this is all I need to do here. If I can actually go ahead and give my default schema, but I'll leave it this way, right? So this is all I need to do. And to test the connection, I'll click test connection under here. successful so the connection is actually successful all I need to do is to click OK and then I will click this OK here great so as you can see this is my DB over here so to connect to this I just need to click on it 
I'm going to wait for it to open. So successfully, we are able to log into our relational database instance. So this is my SQL database instance we've created. And I would also love to show you how you can create a database inside here. So I'll be using SQL statement to create a database. So the command will be create database. And I'm just going to name it my database right okay so this is what it looks like so to execute this command all i need to do is to click on this icon here and this database has been created so the next thing i will do is to run another sql statement that will enable us to use this database so use database we just created and then I'm gonna execute this command awesome so the next thing I would like to show you is how to create a table so the table we want to see inside this database let me show you how to create it so I will just type create table Right, table and I'll name this table users open bracket and in the next line I'm gonna type ID the type the data type will be integer and this will be a primary key all right comma and in the third line so actually this id is the first column i want to have in this table all right so the next column i would like to have is called name where the name of our users will be and it will be vaca i actually call it vaca so it, it stands for variable character that is the type so i'll open bracket and i will give the value as 50 and I'll give comma again. The third line, I would love to have email as my next colon. It will also be vaca. I'll open bracket. Can also give it 50 as my value. And this time, I won't give any comma. Press enter. And then I will be typing the closing the bracket and this. Okay, this should actually be all right so having done this I'll need to execute this statement so all I need to do is to highlight it and here in the execute icon I'll just click on it awesome this table has been created I would also love to show you how you can insert some data I'll run this statement insert into users which is our table okay so i'll open brackets remember we have three columns already so they are id comma name comma space then email i will close the brackets and i will type values here and i'll go to the second line I'll open bracket again and the value I want to give to the first one is one comma I'll press I'll give space I will type join so the name I want to insert in my in the name colon is John Doe comma I'll give space and I will give the email address as john dot do at gmail dot com, and then I will close this bracket. I'll give comma and press enter. The second one, I will op I will open the bracket again, and I will give value as two. I'm gonna give space and I'll open this again. I'll give it a name as Jane. 
this meet, comma, and the email address should be jane.smith at gmail.com. I will close this and I will give comma again. Okay, there's a mistake here. I didn't close this, so it should also be same here. So over here, the third one, I'll open the brackets. I'll give three as my value. Sorry. So the third person's name I want to give now is Bob. Bob John. Okay, and gonna close this. I'll give comma space. And the email address of Bob is Bob dot john at gmail.com oh sorry i should enclose this all right so this is it if i run this command this should actually insert these data into our three columns so to execute this statement all i need to do is to highlight it and then i'll run this Awesome, you can see our execution was successful. So what I'll do now is to open the table so you can see it. So at the left side here, at the, at the schema side, all I need to do is to refresh this. And as you can see, my database has appeared. My table is here. So let me click on this table and this drop down. So inside tables, we have our users table. So this is it here. All I need to do is to click on this users and in this table icon here, I'll click on it. Great. So this is our database. We just created three columns and we're able to insert data into them. These are the IDs. These are their name and these are the email addresses all right so here comes the end of this video today i was able to show you how to create my sql database using relational database service from aws i also showed you how to connect my sql workbench and after that i showed you how to create a database create a table and then insert some data into your table before you go please subscribe to this channel and hit on the notification bell to get notified each time i upload a new video if you have any question kindly leave your comment and i will see you in the next video thank you and bye